Did you just get a Fujifilm X100 6 camera? If you did, you've come to the right place. Well, hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. Gira Guana and I are gonna show you how to set the camera up right from turning it on for the first time. The very first thing you wanna do is charge your battery. Just go ahead and put the battery right in the bottom of the camera, open up the side and connect the USB-C charging cable from the camera to a USB charger. After about an hour or so, disconnect the camera from the cable and we're all set. Next, this camera takes a single SD card. Now there's a big difference between these two. This one at 300 megabits per second and this one is 170. Just get the 170. This card is fine. Go ahead and put it in the camera. Now what I recommend doing before anything else, before you even really turn the camera on and start setting the menu, is to check for firmware updates. And to do that, you press and hold down the DISP back button while you turn on the camera. And you'll see a version number. This is 1.01. .01. So now that you know the number, you can turn the camera off. And now you wanna to go to the Fujifilm website that has the firmware updates. I will leave a link down below right to the page you need to go to. I am not gonna review this camera. I have already reviewed it. <laughs> I have a 46 minute video going over this entire camera. Go watch that. But if you have this camera, you're ready to start. Let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the camera. And the first thing you do is choose your language. Go ahead and put your time zone in here. You can choose your date format, whether you want AM or PM and so forth. If you are new to this camera, I would actually recommend on holding off, connecting it to the app and just learn the camera first. Just go ahead and hit menu, okay. I'll tell you right off the bat that the two most important areas of this camera that you're gonna be dealing with now and for the rest of your life with this camera are the main menu when you press the menu okay button and the drive button, you see it right here. This one is very important. And that is because if you wanna make setting changes for shooting movies, you will get some of them if you're in stills right here. For example, if you're in still image, you do see a little movie icon where you can adjust some settings. However, if you go into drive and scroll down to the little movie icon, now when you press menu okay and you go into the main menu, you will see only options for shooting movies. And some of these settings, even though they are the same exact settings in terms of what they look like in the menu, have two different settings for them, right? Depending upon whether you're shooting stills or movies. For example, if I set my white balance to shade for movies, if I return back to stills, go back into my menu, you see that is a different setting just for stills. It says white balance on both, but you can set them differently depending upon if you're in the advanced movie menu or whether you're in the stills menu. A number of settings are like these. For example, the film simulation setting. You can shoot in Velvia Vivid for stills, flip over to movies, and shoot Acros for movies. And the camera will remember those settings when you turn it off and turn it back on again. Keep in mind that there are some settings that don't change for movies. For example, if I go into the stills area, go into the menu and I go down to the little movie icon, you see that? Now I'm still only in the photography stills mode, right? That I had set here. However, I can make some setting changes for movies. So for example, if I go to mic remote release, change it from mic to remote, if I return back to the advanced movie menu, you'll see it has been changed to remote from that other menu which propagates in here. I do think this is one of the more confusing items for new users of Fujifilm cameras, so I wanted to state this right off the bat. And what I recommend that you do is basically never really play around with that little camera icon in the stills menu. And instead, if you're gonna be making setting changes to your movies, go into the advanced settings for that. So the very first first round of settings that we're gonna do is for still photography, and then we'll follow it with movies and then general settings as well. Go ahead and press menu okay to get to the menu. The first section is very important, and that is your image quality and resolution. 
go ahead and accept the default of large three by two. That will take full advantage of the 40 megapixel sensor on the camera, and it'll give you an image that's 7,728 by 5,152. Next, image quality. I recommend you put this to fine raw. In other words, shoot in both JPEG and RAW. This is not the video to go back and forth on the advantages and disadvantages of shooting with RAW, even if you're only a JPEG shooter. My strong suggestion, and I'm gonna stand by it, is that you shoot in both formats, and if you never use the RAW files, that's fine, put them away somewhere, hard drive space is getting cheaper all the time, and one day you either might want to start editing your RAW files, particularly of your favorite images, or the raw processing algorithms will continue to improve and you'll actually be able to get better looking pictures over time. Next are the compression options of the RAW files. Go ahead and choose lossless compressed. I have a whole video on comparing the different file sizes. It's on my X106 review, go check that out. For JPEG, HEIF, choose JPEG. It is a lot more common. It has much more support on various devices around the web, even if it's not quite as flexible as the new HEIF format. One day, we'll get there. For now, choose JPEG. Film simulation, that's why you love these cameras. I would say if you're just starting out and haven't ever used this camera before, have fun with it. Shoot in all different film sims. But if you are brand new to Fujifilm and you just want a film sim that kind of just looks like I don't know, normal, right? Doesn't have all this extra tweaking into it. I would go with Provia standard. However, this camera does have Reala Ace and I would recommend that. And you might wanna consider Pro Negative High or Pro Negative Standard. These are great film sims to get started with. All of these options here, I would leave off. Of course, experiment with them, but just to get you started, for sharpness, I would actually drop this down maybe by minus one or two. I found that the camera with some film sims and some lighting conditions, the images can be a little bit too sharp on the sharpness JPEG processing algorithm in the camera. And remember, these have no effect on the RAW files at all. So again, that's another reason to shoot RAW and JPEG. Clarity, keep this at zero always for the life of the camera, okay? Keep it at zero. I want you to see now how fast the camera reacts when clarity is set to a value versus zero. Watch this. I'm gonna take a shot right now with clarity set to zero. Three, two, one, done. Now I'm gonna change the value of clarity and I'll put it to say plus three. Now watch what happens when I take a shot. Three, two, one, did you see that? How long it took, said storing, and it took that extra few seconds. I'll do it again. I have clarity enabled. Three, two, one. Can you believe that? However, if I go back, put it to zero, I'll take the same shot again. Three, two, one. That's why you don't set clarity to a value. It takes too long, unless you've got the time. I don't have the time. And besides, I would probably add clarity to the raw file in post-production if I wanted it. And I'd add it to only certain areas of the image that I wanted it. Selective processing instead of one big baked in mess. Your uncle pal detect says, don't set that thing to anything other than zero. For color space, you might wanna change this to Adobe RGB. That will give you a larger color space to work with. For long exposure noise reduction, I actually turn that off, but I have seen advantages to it. I just don't have the patience because it basically doubles the amount of time for you to get the shot with a really long exposure. So if you have the shutter open, say, you know, 15 seconds and you have long exposure noise reduction on, you're then going to wait <laughs> 30 seconds for your image to be finally saved out to the SD card. And sometimes depending upon what you're shooting, it may not be worth it. So the next section is AFMF, where all of the autofocusing settings are made. For your autofocus mode, <laughs> that's a huge subject. But what I would recommend for starting out would be either zone or single point. I would try zone for just general shooting. And then you can certainly move the joystick left or right or up or down and cause it to go into a mode where you can change the size with the command dial. You see that? And you also have three different custom options right here. 
And I think that single point is great for portraits. I usually make it to about right there. Try that out. Of course, you're gonna be modifying a lot of this stuff, but just to get you started. Same thing with AFC custom setting, keep it on one for now. But if you're new to Fujifilm, these are critically important for the performance of your autofocus. The more you understand these, the better your camera is gonna work at autofocusing. I cannot emphasize this enough. I like to have store autofocus mode by orientation turned on. And what this means is that say you have single point autofocus on horizontal, right? You go to flip the camera, okay? And you have it on zone, say for that particular orientation. When you flip it back to horizontal, it will auto go back to single point. That's what that means. Now for number of focus points, there's debate on this one. I generally tend to keep it on 117. I find that autofocus is a little bit faster for more action shots. However, certainly having 425 points, you're going to have a lot more information for the camera to work with. So experiment with that one. For now, just starting out, keep it at 117. Now there's a reason some of these are grayed out. You see that here? And that's because if you look at your focus mode setting here, it's in manual. You see that? And the camera will only show you menu items that pertain to what the other settings can use. So if we take it out of manual, I'm going to go ahead and put it in C for continuous autofocus. You see how the menu just changed and the other items are now available. While face eye detection setting is default to off, if you're gonna take this camera out on one of your first few times and shoot people, I would strongly recommend putting it on. Keep it at eye auto. However, if you're gonna be shooting a variety of subjects, make sure you turn it off. That will speed up your overall autofocus. Subject detection setting we are not going to get into in this video, but keep it off for now. For AF plus MF, I would turn that on. And what that does is if the camera is autofocusing, right, and it's finished autofocusing, you can also adjust the focus and fine tune it. Even if you're in autofocus mode, even if you're in continuous or single autofocus, you can fine tune and adjust it manually. It gives you the best of both worlds. There's no reason not to have it enabled. Keep it on. If you are going to be using the camera to manually focus, MF assist, focus peak highlight, and put it in red. As soon as you start to rotate the focus ring, you'll see areas of your subject highlighted in red as you turn the focus ring. I would recommend keeping focus check to off for now. The rest of these items on page three can pretty much stay where they are. Next are the shooting settings. Most of these you do not need to change. One thing to note, for self timer, if you set a value here and then you turn the camera off, it will get reset when the camera comes back on. If you don't like that, go ahead and change this to on. Photometry is one of the more important ones on here and that is how the camera measures the light in the scene. I would keep it on either multi or center weighted for now. As you get more comfortable with the camera, particularly if you start shooting portraits, you might want to move it into spot. I wouldn't use average. I've noticed it doesn't do as good a job with average as it does with multi. Shutter type, for now, I would keep it on mechanical shutter. There are advantages and disadvantages to using the electronic shutter. I do have a full video on the different types of shutters and when you'd use which one of them. For IS mode, that's image stabilization, that's the IBIS unit in the camera, I would leave it on continuous. I go over this in my review of this camera, so be sure to check that out if you're not sure what that is. For ISO auto setting, you have three choices here that you can customize. The camera defaults when you first get it to auto three. You can certainly change it to auto one. These have all the same options. You can just make each one of them a slightly different range of settings. What I like to do is change it to auto one, keep my default sensitivity to 125, but I change the max sensitivity and I go all the way up to 12,800. My reasoning for this is I'd rather have a noisy shot or a dark shot than no shot. For minimum shutter speed, you're gonna have to experiment with this one. I generally will keep it on something like 60 or 125. I get real nervous putting auto for minimum shutter speed because shutter speed can certainly ruin a shot if it's too slow and you've got camera shake or subject motion. And you know I'm gonna tell you, I have a whole video just on auto ISO. Be sure to check that one out too.
Make sure that these three are off for general shooting. We're not going to go over flash because this is not a flash tutorial, although I have some of those too. So we'll skip flash for now. We're going to skip the movie setting right now because we're going to go back to that when we get to the advanced movie menu. So we'll skip over that. Now in the little wrench under user setting, you're certainly going to want to learn about the my menu setting, but for now, just keep everything default. Sensor cleaning, I would make sure that when the camera is switched on, it's not cleaning the sensor. Rather, when the camera is switched off, it is. So set it up just like you see here. My reason for that is when I turn this camera on, I want to take a shot the microsecond. I want to have it available as soon as I turn it on. I don't want to wait even for half a second for it to clean the sensor. The rest of these you can just keep as is for sound setup. This is just your own personal preference. I do actually prefer to have some sound for the shutter. So I will put this to low. For the self timer beep, I actually turn this to high. A lot of times when I have it on self timer, the camera is pretty far away and I want to be able to hear it. The next section is screen setup. I've got a whole video that goes over the different types of screens and viewfinders on this camera. So I'm not going to get into that here, but let's go through the settings. For view mode setting, you may as well just keep it as it is. It's on on sensor right now for shooting, meaning that when you put this up to your face, you're going to be blocking this little sensor right here. You see that? But you do have other options here. But for now, keep it on eye sensor and that'll give you the best balance of battery life and usability. If you are shooting a lot of video, I would recommend LCD only. These you'll want to experiment with once you've been using the camera for a while, but right now, just keep them as they are. Make sure that preview exposure white balance and manual mode is set to both exposure and white balance. That way, what you see through the viewfinder and on the LCD screen better matches the film simulation and the lighting of the scene. Make sure that natural live view is off. For OVF image display, I just keep it on small window, and that feature on the camera actually serves a number of purposes. I've got a whole video video on that coming, so be sure to check it out. DISP custom setting is very important. You've got different choices for how to set them, and what I would recommend for everything would be the histogram, and just set it for both. Now keep in mind, if you're holding the camera like this and you're making the settings, the custom settings that you make are only going to affect the LCD screen. So in order to make the custom settings for the electronic viewfinder, you need to be doing it while the camera is held up to your face and you can look through it and see it. Large indicators mode, keep them off for now. And the reason for that, even if you have bad eyes like I do, keep it off because with large indicators mode, some of the custom settings that you can display on the screen are not available. Next, we have button dial setting. I pretty much accept all of the defaults on page one. However, on page two, Boy, do we have a problem here. Make sure that shoot without card is off. That way you never go out thinking you have an SD card in the camera, shoot a bunch of photos, come back, and they were never saved to the card. This way, if you put the setting to off, the camera will not take a single photo unless you've got the SD card in here. I'd keep all these as is. For touchscreen setting, keeping it on or off is up to you. I find it more useful for video shooting. However, one thing I strongly recommend that you do, while the camera's on and you're not in a menu, press and hold down the DISP back button just like this. And it will switch to a menu where you can set your custom buttons. And what I would recommend is to go down and you see where it says these touch functions, up, left, right, and down. You see that right there? I would turn these off. Just go to none. Just like that. Honestly, the reason for this is it is so easy to accidentally swipe up or left or right with your nose if you're not paying attention and then trip something on the camera. For auto power off, I would keep it at two minutes if you're shooting mostly stills. However, for video shooting, particularly if you've got the camera locked down on a tripod, I would have auto power off set to off. Now, one of the most important and significant setting changes that you can make is right here. Performance. Change that to boost. That allows you to get the absolute maximum performance out of your camera for both autofocus, the screen, everything else. Keep it on boost, and if you need to, carry an extra battery around. Then down here, I keep it on frame rate priority. This next option mainly is for shooting in high res video like 4 or 6.2K, 60 frames a second. I always set this to high. Yeah, yeah, you get this message, big deal. 
I have never had any other Fuji camera conk out by setting it to that. And what this setting means is that the camera is less likely to just auto shut itself off the minute it starts to get a little warm. It's got to get hot as in really hot before it shuts off. Save data setup. I don't think you need to do much with these for now. And for the network settings, if you're not planning on connecting this camera to an app or any kind of Bluetooth functionality, I would make sure that Bluetooth is off. Why drain any extra battery power if you're not going to be using it? Make sure connection mode is in USB card reader and that USB power supply communication setting is set to auto. Now, if you experience any weirdness with this camera in the menu, for example, like this right here. Remember, we had set it to the highest quality and now it's back down to small three by two. How did that happen? If you go to your camera, scroll down, this digital teleconverter is really easy to trip. Therefore, turn it off. Make sure your digital teleconverter is turned off. Camera doesn't immediately show that. And as you can see, it fixed the problem. So now let's set the camera up for video. Press the drive button and scroll down to movie. Press the menu OK button twice, and you'll now be in the detailed movie settings menu. Now, once again, I go into all the video settings and I do a whole overview of, you know, autofocus and stabilization. Check out my review on this camera, but let's get you set up with what I think is a good place to set this camera. First thing is I would go into movie mode and frankly, I would put it in 4K. You have an X106. It shoots all the way up to 6.2K. Why would you leave it in regular HD? At least put it in 4K because you'll have a lot more resolution to work with. Go ahead and select 4K. Not 4K HQ, but just 4K for now for getting started. Now your frame rate. If you are unsure what frame rate to use, then stick with 30 frames per second if you are in the United States. If you're say somewhere in Europe and you know you're gonna be delivering to phase alternate line, PAL system, then you need to put it in 25 frames per second. You probably already know that. However, for the web, for social media, and just about everything on the planet, I would keep it for now at 30 frames per second. And don't worry about the fact it doesn't say three 2997 is fine. And no, we're not going to get into why it is that and not 30, not in this video. At some point, you may want to switch it down and shoot it at 24 frames per second. And that frame rate is more what you would see when seeing cinema in the theater. It's at 24 frames per second and it has a different type of motion look to it. So just like this. Next, go up to your movie setting list. You'll see the choice that you made right here. 4K 16 by 9, 29. 97 and go ahead and select the middle choice. Make sure it's saving to the SD card just like this. Now, this is a real tricky one. If you have a computer that was manufactured, say, in the last three to five years, I would not worry too much about setting this to H265. However, if you have an older computer and you are planning on doing a lot of editing and you don't want to create what are called proxy files, the H264 format will be a lot easier for those computers to read. What I recommend you do if you're planning on editing, and I would choose H265. 65, 422. And yes, I have a video settings video <laughs> on the channel for Fuji that goes into the differences between 422 and 420. For now, keep it at 422. This is an important one. And I recommend 200 megabits per second. You will have much better quality video. On a single 64 gigabyte SD card, you've got 40 minutes of record time. But if you need more video time, go back into your movie setting list, go to this middle rectangle right Right here and I would drop it down to 100 megabits per second. The quality will still be very good and if you look at now how much time you've got an hour and 18 minutes. And here you can obviously choose if you're going to shoot an F-log. Keep it right here at this selection for SD. Don't worry about F-log at this stage in the use of the camera. HDMI output setting. Make sure that this is off. For video shooting, I would keep photometry at multi for now. But if you do want to be a bit more precise about your light metering, then you could switch it to center weighted. All right, so the IS mode for video is a very important setting. And most of the time, you're going to want to leave it on IBIS. 
If things get really shaky, you could put it on IBIS plus digital image stabilization. The difference between the two, IBIS is the mechanical shutter unit itself actually physically moving to help stabilize your footage, whereas digital image stabilization is the camera applying a process to your footage before it saves it to the SD card. Between the two of these, IBIS is much better, but keep in mind that when you have stabilization turned on on the camera, you're most likely gonna get a bit of a crop to your footage, okay? So if you know that your camera is gonna be sitting on a tripod, then turn this off. You don't need to have IBIS running or DIS or anything else if your camera is gonna be stationary. IS mode boost for now, keep it off. Okay, the only time that you would ever turn this on is if you are hand holding the camera and you're not panning, okay? You're hand holding the camera just like this and that's it. And go check out my review of the camera because I have demonstrations and examples and things like that. However, think of IS mode boost as, you know, the, the mom or the dad standing, you know, holding the camera like this while their kid is up on stage at the play at school, right? You're just standing in one place holding the camera. That's what you'd want that for. Most of the time, if you're panning it around, moving the camera, turn it off. If you leave it on, your footage is not gonna look that good. Movie optimized control, keep that off. Now for ND filter, you're gonna wanna leave that one off, but you'll probably wanna make a shortcut button, right, to get to it quickly, to toggle it on and off on the camera. And what that does basically is it puts a pair of sunglasses over the lens, so to speak, and it's a four stop ND filter, meaning it darkens the scene by four stops when you enable it. Now we're in the image quality section of the dedicated movie menu. You can set your film sim and so forth. And for your film simulation, for video, one of the better ones for video, if you plan on doing some post-production work, is Eterna. It's less saturated and it has less shadow detail in it right off the bat, which you can then, of course, adjust in post-production. So I would go with that. If you want nothing to do with editing video and you don't plan on ever doing that, then I probably would at this point just keep it in either Provia, Reala Ace, or Nostalgic Negative, which I think is an awesome film sim for video for certain cases. Try it out. For white balance for video, you should be turning white balance off and not using auto white balance, especially if you're indoors for video. I got videos on this. Can't talk about it now. I'd love to tell you all about it right now. I can't do that. What I will tell you for right now to get you up to speed, keep it, hate to say this, but keep it either on auto or ambiance priority, but make sure sure you see this little grid here make sure this little dot is in the center okay you can get real screwed up if it's not let's say you're in auto you're not paying attention you're like you know you're there and you you know you hit menu okay and now when you're out filming your masterpiece you know like Fellini out there you're looking through the thing you're like wait a minute here this is terrible I got tinting what's going on you go into your menu and it says white balance auto what gives? Why do I have that tint? There's another little secret menu. You got to click on that and then make sure that that little dot and you got to make sure that little square is in the middle. Not that I've ever had this problem before. Sharpness. I would turn this down for video to about a minus one or minus two. However, if you're shooting with the Eterna film simulation, then honestly, I'd keep it at zero. You'll figure this stuff out and you'll have your own way of doing it. That's probably way better than what I'm telling you. But for now, just do it this way. Okay, AFMF, your autofocus mode for video. Don't have time to get into all this right now, but for just getting out there and getting this done with a minimum of hassle, put it in area. And that way, the center of the, the frame will be what's in focus. So just kind of, you know, point your camera at your subject, you have your subject in the center. While you get used to the camera, you can always change it later. And you're gonna generally, with video, gonna wanna touch upon the manual focusing a lot more than autofocus with video. AFC custom setting. Okay, for video, what I would do, tracking sensitivity, I would keep it at two, okay? However, autofocus speed, 
I'll tell you, I'd kick that up to five. Unless you want to emulate some director and have it, you know, slowly rack focus. If that's the case, you really should be doing it manually. So if you're auto focusing, generally you want to get the camera to auto focus as quickly as possible, stick it on five, and then see how it works out for you. Face eye auto detection is outstanding for video. So if you're shooting people, right, in a kind of a group or one or two people, I would use face eye auto detect just like on stills. AF FMF, same thing as stills, put that on. Manual focus assist, sure. Now there's a feature called focus map. I don't have time to get into here, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But if you're not experienced in shooting video, you're not gonna wanna use it anyway, so don't worry about it. In the meantime, just set focus peak highlight to a color you like. I'll go for red high, but I've also found that yellow is great too, particularly if you're shooting with a black and white film sim. Moving along now to audio settings. There are two separate settings, one for the built-in mic and one for an external mic that you can plug into the camera. Both of these are defaulted to zero. The problem with that is that, you see that red that just happened? I'll do it again. I don't like red. That's called clipping in audio, and that's very bad, okay? that That's like the worst thing in audio. You never want your audio to clip, meaning above zero dB. So what I recommend you do is put this on auto, okay? I would also make sure that your mic level limiter is set to on. The camera will then really be working to make sure that your audio, if it's too loud, doesn't blow out the mic and cause clipping problems. Make sure low cut filter is off. Mic remote release, you're gonna want it on mic. Your mic jack setting should be set to mic for an external mic that you can plug into the camera. The wind filter, ugh, the camera really doesn't have the processing power, the time, the memory, or the skill to do a good job with that, keep it off. Time code, forget about it. We're not gonna get into time code. You don't need to worry about time code. And there you have it, that's video. So this basically covers the setup, right? All the menus, the various user settings, stills, and video shooting. I think we're done with that now. There is so much to learn about this camera. And I really wanna tell you to not take anything I say as absolute rules that you have to live by, okay? The whole point in having a camera like this is to experiment. This camera is so wonderful at so many things. I wanted today's video to just get you on your way. So the settings I told you today are designed to do just that. Get you out there shooting with a minimum of hassle and fuss. And then as you get more experienced with the camera, with the menu, with Fujifilm system, in general, then you can start tweaking things and you can graduate up to using items like the Q menu or the My menu or changing the film simulations or coming up with your own recipes, stuff like that. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in a new video very soon. Take care. I don't know. I think maybe they might have crashed. We are being <laughs> watched. <laughs> yeah, the gate's definitely not open. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just stop. Warning. Look at all the razor wire. Photography in this area is prohibited. Okay, okay.